Hi everyone, my name is Aline Balistero and I was having a real hard time trying to figure out how to make this video short. There is so much to talk and explore about footwork and footwork flying cameras around. Just for you to have an idea, in my studies about body awareness, which started around the same time I was getting interested in Steadicam, I found out there is a physical therapy foot specialty. Yes, at the time I didn't know. And I went a little deeper by actually taking one of their courses. Some of the things we're doing, we're adding more and more protection to the soles of our feet. And I know this is a controversial subject because it's still believed and backed up by part of the scientific community that it is okay to do that. But let's just look at the difference between these two little things and what I mean by protection. Orthotics, they are devices or tools designed to provide auxiliary support. We should never think of them as a permanent solution, mostly because you have the solution within your body. Most of the time being working on that area and re-educating your brain to go back to perceive it as functional. And protection, we are understanding we need to provide support as if our bodies couldn't do that job. We are doing that to ourselves. Our brains are designed to optimize neural function in general, physical and mental. In order to be more productive, we scan what's being requested the most and improve those areas. Whatever you're not using as much is slowly, literally disconnected from your neurons, little cables and wires. You probably already know that. This is just a reminder for next time you say, I am, whatever, whatever. No, you're not. In a permanent perspective, you are today because if you really wanted to change that thing, you would, in most cases, of course. We're using orthotics as a permanent protection when they are really great tools for helping re-educating ourselves to go back to functional, but they're not meant to be used forever, like what we're doing with shoes. Shoes are being designed as orthotics, but used permanently, and that's where there might be a problem. I know it's hard to grasp that one. I'm not just saying this here. There's plenty of beautiful studies on this. I do test that in my own body since that time in 2008 and plenty of other nerds like me that also test things in their own bodies with more scientific results are figuring out the same. Now, I'm gonna tell you why we haven't agreed to that yet, because we are lazy. And I'm not offending anyone here by saying that. We are also designed to be lazy. That same brain software that was doing the optimization of tasks also works under the law of the minimum effort, which does make sense. We want that for Steadicam as well, right? Never walk when you can write, 100%. But we took that to another level, the dysfunctional one. Okay, so let's get practical now. It won't help much if I don't provide tools to work this out, right? but it's only if you're willing to put in the effort, sorry. <laughs> That's why I always say when people ask about shoe types, there's not a fixed or correct answer because you have to first ask yourself, what have I been doing with my feet so far or in the last 20, 30 years? The answer will highly depend on that, why? Because if you spend a lifetime stepping on cushion, you have successfully educated your software and harder to adapt to that. Those changes do take time. Second question you're gonna ask yourself is if you're willing to put in the effort to make a change, because it definitely won't be a push the button solution, but I guarantee you it is fun in case you're willing to give it a try. Once you have your answers to those questions, it's powerful to understand that you can make a decision. And then you might think, there's nothing wrong with me that needs to be changed. Well then, great for you, don't change then. I am definitely not implying there is a global foot dysfunction going on, or am I? Now, if you consider we're able to explore that our bodies have so much more to give us and it will greatly embrace it once you start, then you can start it today. Some of us have no idea how bad it is to have reduced mobility in these two areas, just to mention two for now, ankles and big toes. Are all toes, but your big toe is a main character in this movie. One of the reasons we're losing its mobility is because we're overprotecting our feet. Inside most of the shoes today, we cannot move big toe like this. We should have closer to 90 degree angle of this joint mobility here. Do you? What about this way? 
And yes, we could move our ankles in regular shoes, but we're simply not doing it because we've been sitting in chairs or anything, your legs are always in the same 90 degree position. But very important to mention, you didn't do the full work if you also don't make those muscles and joints proportionally stronger. Mobility goes together with stability, but that's a subject for another video. Things to do feet wise. Number one, feel the entire soles of your feet on the ground. If you saw my previous video, you heard about tactile feedback. On the soles of your feet are one of the biggest neural terminations concentration, same as in your hands, and pressure receptors and all kinds of receptors that are constantly sending information to your brain about what's going on and what it has to do as a functional response. Number two, try different kinds of ground to give your brain more extra different information feeling it maybe barefoot or whatever please just don't go nuts and start with a marathon in minimal shoes <laughs> remember it's a long-term change if you decide to do it three use and explore toe mobility you can always practice relaxing in this position for example four use toes for impulse they actually need to press the floor down at this point Number five, spread the impact forces, not leaving all the load for heels only. Six, leave the back leg behind a bit longer to regain hip extension. And the list goes on, but let's stay here for today. While stabilizing everything by also regaining some strength, we have to equally go for flexibility and strength in our entire body. It's a full system. Your feet are only the beginning. Again, by no means I am saying you should go straight to barefoot shoes right now. If you're willing to do it, it is a slow transition. Just as an example, I started myself maybe five to six years ago and I'm still going through it. I also choose to wear both depending on the day and different moments, of course. We work long hours, as you know. So I check the ground. Is it a full day on flat concrete? I might start with no cushion because I have trained already, but a few hours in, I'll switch shoes to some cushion, flat, hard floor. Is it sand or rocks or anything with more texture? I'll gladly reduce the cushion as much as I can and make those neurons work. I want to have the feedback to improve the communication loop between the information inputs and my brain. You really got to see what works for you. And of course, if you have any question or concern, check with your doctor before you do anything. Last exercise to test your balance and prove a point here. Try to stand on one foot on a hardwood floor and then on carpet, on a softer surface, no rig, nothing. Now with your rig or camera, do the slowest walk ever on a straight line with the lens facing forward in both scenarios as well. And then let me know if this makes any sense and if you would be willing to give it a try. Fly safe.